I am Kimbo and I blog at a girl in the and this video is part of my silhouette love series where I'm trying to teach you guys to love your silhouette as much as I love my silhouette. I've been trying to show you lots of fun tutorials and things that the silhouette can do just so you're very comfortable with using it. I'm trying to stop him while I promise. Hey <laughs> too, go away. Do you want me to start? That's what happens when I say I'm doing a YouTube video and please don't come in. It's my bad for doing it Why everybody's home. Anyways, today we're going to be going over the offset button. It's a button that maybe you don't use or don't even know how to use it. It's a really cool feature. It's really great for if you want to layer vinyl or if you have a thin font and you want to make a background to make it pop or make it a little bit thicker. So this is the project that we're making and I wanted it just to pop a little bit more. So I used this offset so I could have this bottom layer of vinyl. So it's a really fun, handy feature to have, especially if you have a really thin font that won't cut out a vinyl very well and you want to chunk it up a little bit. So there's a couple different ways to use it to your advantage. Let me know if you have any questions. Let's learn about offset. I know you guys are excited. This is one of my cup files I just created. It says flower power and I wanted a little bit bold. I want it to look like this one with the layers. Just makes it pop a little bit more. And I'm going to show you the easy way to get a nice layer underneath it that just matches up perfectly. So I first need to trace these because it's just a solid image right now. Trace. And then these are the flowers that will go with it. Now these flowers are connected, so I'm going to right click, release compound path because my ungroup is not even highlighted. I don't even have that option. And then I'm going to color coordinate these because it makes my life easier. Oh, helps if I click on it. And the flowers are all going to be white like daisies. And then the middles just go on like this. But I'm going to show you because we can do some layers on these flowers as well. Okay, so here's my flower power. We're going to make it yellow just to pop a little bit. Over here on the right hand side is a star and if you notice it has a line around the outside that's going to be our offset. And all you have to do is make sure whatever you want to offset is highlighted. You can see I've got a box around flower power and I'm just going to click offset and it immediately pops up an outline. And I actually think that looks amazing. So you can just click apply or you can totally toy around with it. Let me zoom in so you can see it a little bit better as I play around with it. Oh, it automatically created it for me. Hang on, I'll show you. I'll highlight it and you can see how good it looks. And then we'll play around. See, it's just perfecto. Okay, so let's do this one more time now that we're zoomed in. Offset. You're going to click on this and they're going to get fatter. You can make a big, big bubble letters. Or you can make a, just a teeny tiny. So if you have a font that you love, but it's just so thin, and sometimes when you cut it with vinyl, it just won't cut because it's just so thin it keeps pulling up. This is a great way to still use that font and just chunk out the letters just a little bit. See, so I just have a barely outline around it. Also a good option the corners. I don't really think it matters that much. You guys noticing a difference between clicking the corners? I don't see any difference. So that will maybe come into play if you had a sharper. So my corners on my cut files end rounded because it's the pen I use. But if you have a sharp corner, it might not. It might make a difference if you're doing corner versus like a sharp corner versus a rounded corner. But mine are already rounded, so this one won't apply here. Let's do let's do a really chunky one just so you can see it. Real chunk. Apply. And we'll color coordinate it. it. Looks pretty. See? Look how fun that is. And you can see how we've got a little bit. You can right click, release compound path, and you can pull off these little tiny pieces. Oh! This is where the undo button comes back in. It's going to put it back exactly where. Oh, it's not going to let me pick up this little piece. Pull 
off that one. Pull off that one. I think I'll leave that one. It's a little bit big. Let's see if I can get this one without moving it. Nope. Let's see if I can get it back exactly where it needs to be. Probably not. Ugh, so hard. Let's zoom in. Notice I'm always clicking the undo because I want it to be lined up perfectly. I got it! I got it! Oh, <laughs> now you're getting this stream. So I make sure to pull them all the way off the screen because I don't want them to get picked up and accidentally cut. Okay, we're going to make compound path like magic. And then we've gotten rid of the little tiny nuisance ones that maybe we didn't want. So either whether you're doing chunky or normal or really skinny, either way it's going to look really nice. Let's do an internal one really quickly. So I've got this one. Maybe the one you have is a little too fat and you want to do a little bit thinner, like it doesn't fit in the space or something. I click on the star again. We're going to do internal. Now, it's hard to see because I've got a color. So let's go make this. Try this one more time with no color so you can see it. All right. See how there's no option to click because this is not highlighted? Internal. So that's how teeny tiny it is. So that's not going to do anything if I make it bigger. See how it magically starts to grow. Does that not look pretty cool? Apply. Now one thing to remember is that they won't be connected. So let's pull off the big piece. Oh, not that one. I'm having problems grabbing my stuff today. No, not you, fool. There we go. Pull that off. Bring this one to the front, just to make sure it's in the front. We're going to group it together. So now we can move it around and it will still be lined up perfectly. We're going to make this, this one yellow. We're going to make this one blue. Let's look how cute that works. So that's how you do the offset. It is very easy. And I've actually drawn fonts before or like lettering and then I do an outline. Look, if you pull it off, I know I'm all, I get off on a tangent. I start talking and then I get reminded. If you set it aside, it looks like a shadowing thing, which I think is awesome. But I will do, like I did this flower power, and I actually wrote around it and made a bold outline around it. And then I just think, why would anybody want this? Because it's drawn by a human, which means it's imperfect. And this one is just computerized, and it lines up perfectly. So I'm going to show you the flower, too. So if I, I wanted to put this on a white board, so I knew the white flowers would get lost. So I just thought if I... Made a little tiny border, oh, nope, border around the flower. It would pop off that paper a little bit more. See? So you can do it with anything, any image, any wording, any lettering. You should be able to use this offset button. It's a little tricky one. I mean, it's not super tricky, but it's just a little tiny doodad that actually does quite a bit. All right. I hope you guys understood the video. Let me know if you guys have any questions. And if you've missed any videos in my Silhouette Love series, make sure to scroll back and catch them all. And I would love a thumbs up or to subscribe to my channel.